2022 Colorado Mesa University Associated Student Government Presidential and Vice Presidential Debate hosted by CMU TV. My name is Caleb Heisel, Chief of Staff for the Associated Student Government. Tonight's debate includes the candidates for President and Vice President. The Office of Student Body President and Vice President are powerful positions directly elected by their peers to represent them to student administration and to the community. This office is in direct communication with university administration to represent the needs of students to Vice President Jody Deers and President John Marshall. The President and Vice President work together, which leads to tonight's format. I will ask a question of each of the tickets, who will then have varying time to respond. After their question, the same question will be posed to the other tickets. There will be an individual question to each ticket that is specific to them, which the others will not respond to. When each ticket has answered the question, we will move on to the next question. And now it's time to introduce our candidates for president and vice president. On my right, presidential candidate Sai Shimamura and Jason Hunter. On the very left, candidates Jimmy Haller and Asa Seal. And then in the middle, candidates Selena Edwards and Shelby Rios. Each team will now have two minutes to introduce themselves. Sai and Jason, we'll start with you. Hello, everyone. My name is Sai Shimamura. I am currently the director of the Culture and Inclusion Council, and I've been a minority senator for two years now with Associate Student Government. I am also from Kailua, Oahu. And I just really want to thank CMU TV for allowing to have this event possible, as well as the election committee for the Associate Student Government. Absolutely. Uh, my name is Jason Hunter. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I'm a member of the Thetis I fraternity on, ca on campus. I'm the production manager at KMSN 91.3 FM, which is the radio station we have on campus, and I'm a house representative for ASG. Um, I also want to take the time to thank CMU TV and ASG for putting this event on. Thank you all. All right. Thank you, Jimmy. Or thank you. <laughs> now we'll move all the way to the left to Jimmy and Asa. You have two minutes to introduce yourselves. Hi. So. Um, my name is Jimmy Haller, and obviously I'm running for Associated Student Government President. Um, some things I'd like you to know about me is that um, I really care about people. I, um, I have a lot of compassion, and that's why Asa and I have decided to run on a platform of compassion first. And so um, as um, I've been going throughout um, CMU, I've learned a lot, and I have been um, the Biological Sciences Senator for um, the time. And yeah, yeah, I'm Asa Steele, and I'm running for the ASG vice president seat. I'm currently a junior here at CMU and a counseling psychology major. And more of what Jimmy said, we're running on a compa compassion based platform, and that we're here for you, the student body. Awesome, thank you. Now, Selena and Shelby, you have two minutes to introduce yourselves. Hi everyone, my name's Selena. I am a second year grad student. I'm currently studying my master's in business administration. Um, I am also the current ASG vice president and I've been a part of ASG for about four years now. Um, I am also the grad assistant for club sports and I'm looking forward to this debate. Hi guys, my name is Shelby Rios. I am from San Antonio, Texas. I'm currently a junior studying biological sciences minoring for in forensic science. Um, I am also the current director and financial advisor for the club advisory board here on campus. Thank you. Okay, Selena, we'll start with you for the first two minute question. Why do you want to be president? What is the role of president? And how will you utilize the presidency should you be elected? Thank you, Caleb. Um, I want to be president because I want to continue to support students um, by pushing initiatives such as Swipe Out Hunger and Maverick Marketplace that this year alone has really impacted students positively based on personal feedback and testimonials that I've received. Um, what is it that a president does? A president is, is responsible for leading um, by voicing the students' concerns from across all three campuses, including WCCC, Montrose, and the main campus. Um, we are also responsible for leading activities and initiatives that address student concerns um, and issues. Um, by holding this position, I plan to do just that by listening to students' ideas and their concerns, um, and also holding myself accountable and the organization as a whole to following through on promises and concerns and ideas that have been brought up to us, and uh, making sure that we're doing that in the best way and effectively by um, sharing student fees, talking about conversations and topics that need to be, have, that need to be had, and um, addressing issues in regards to safety, representation, and uh, funding clubs and orgs. All right, thank you, Selena. 
Jimmy, you now have two minutes to answer the same question. All right. So um, the reason why I want to be president is um, because I really care about CMU and I and the students here, and um, I really care about helping people, and so that's what I seek to do with um, my candidacy. And so um, the role of the president is a little bit complex. There are some formal powers and there are some informal powers. And so aside from just attending the meetings and um, being there to fund clubs and things like that, um, Asa and I want to do a lot of independent projects to actually help individual students. And I think a lot of ASG has been centered around um, clubs and organizations largely and I think we need to go back to um, making the presidency about helping individual students and that's why I've been reaching out to a lot of students and um, and I just want to be a person that um, helps somebody and so the way that I would utilize my position as um, president is I would um, try to leverage my resources and um, lead with direction in terms of student government because that's essentially what the president is. Is there a leader for student government? And so I think we could do a lot more with um, allocating tasks to people. I plan on working with the student senate and the house and, um, and the executives and um, making sure that everyone has a good idea of what their role is and how they could actually help the individual students rather than just um, being a position just for the sake of being in the position. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jimmy. Now to Sai, you have two minutes for the same. Thanks, Caleb. So uh, why I want to be president is I want to have give students the resources that I was given my freshman year. So my freshman year, I was assigned to a mentor, and that mentor helped me become the HPA, the Holokai Polynesian Coordinator, as well as the Cultural Inclusion Council Director. And I want to do the same to students, whether it's uh, just pulling a student in and having them, introducing them to student life. And I, I want to be that uh, person to them. All right, thank you. And so now we will move on to Jason <coughs> for the next two minute question. So what is the vice president? What is the role of vice president? And what do you plan to do with the position should you be elected? Absolutely, so a little bit of my why is why I want to be vice president is, like I said in the beginning, I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I grew up with six siblings and I'm the second oldest sibling. I'm the first born male in my family, so I kind of feel like I'm a natural born leader. Um, I've always had any situation I've been in, I've been in, put in position to lead. And I've always felt like I've done a great job with that. So I feel like I can kind of apply some of those roles and tactics that I, that I learned growing up to the students of Colorado Mesa University um, and to help them be the best versions of themselves that they can be. So to continue with the role of the vice president, um, I think it's important to know that the vice president, of course, runs the Senate. Um, they're responsible for making sure that the Senate knows what's going on and when it's going on. So when I'm, if I'm elected uh, vice president, I'll ensure that I'm doing my best to make sure that that's happening. To continue on with that, the vice president also handles any interior problems ASG may be faced with. Um, I feel like when problems arise, it's really more than anything a lack of communication. So I'll do, I'll do what I can to ensure that there's transparent and honest communication being held uh, within ASG. To finish up, this is a very vital year, um, being that it is a biannual year, so I want to ensure that I am doing my best to oversee and remove as much pressure as I can off of the biannual process. Um, it's very important that everybody who has a role in the uh, biannual knows what's going on and when it's going on, so when that arises at the end of the year, it'll be easier to make everything go smoothly. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Jason. Okay, Shelby, you have two minutes to answer the same. I'd like to be vice president to address concerns that the individual students may have on campus and continue to support clubs in which I have done as current CAB director. Um, in terms of the roles of the vice president, that includes supporting the operations and procedures of ASG, which would be allocation of student fees, um, funding clubs, internal documentation, meeting with other organizations and their leaders, and also supporting the Senate as a whole. Um, I would utilize, utilize my vice presidency to get some outreach um, for the non-traditional and out-of-state students, being one myself, um, and help work with them and help them feel more represented on campus along with the minorities that we have, and also continuing to just focus on bridging the gap that we have between our main campus, Montrose, and WCCC, and then building off of um, initiatives that Selena has started, including the Food Pantry and Maverick Marketplace. All right, thank you, Shelby. Asa, you now have two minutes for the same question. All righty, thank you. 
I want to be vice president, Ken, or want, I want to be vice president because I see it as a genuine chance to affect positive change within our campus for ASG specifically, for student body, and for clubs and organizations. Now, I want to utilize my platform and make myself a resource to all of those listed people. And I think that's something I can, I can do. <laughs> now, okay, I see the vice presidency as being broken down into two categories, formal and informal, similar to what Jimmy mentioned. Now, there are formal ability or formal tasks to accomplish, such as sitting in on meetings for executive meetings and committee meetings and running the Senate. And just as many of my uh, opponents have also said, but I think in order to be a genuinely impactful vice president, you have to thrive in both the formal, uh, formal requirements and the informal. The informal being p making yourself a pillar of support and representation for your Senate, for your students, and for your clubs and organization. Making sure that you're displaying leadership in an effective role model, or as an effective role model. And finally, with um, the vice presidency election, I would obviously make an active effort towards the campaign promises that we managed, which, or that we promised, which is, well, we which, sorry, which is um, listening on a here for you platform, compassion based and responsive listening, actionable claims. All right, thank you so much, Asa. So we're gonna stay on you and Jimmy for this three minute question. Why do you think your experience inside and outside of the Associated Student Government qualifies you to win the election? Um, very good question. So um, I have lots of experiences. So um, inside of student government, I um, have been a senator, and I feel like I've been able to affect positive change in terms of making sure that the bills we passed are consistent and fair to all of the students. And I'm also very proud of the work that I've been able to do with the equity committee, which is we've been able to um, stock the pantry with several things that students need, which is um, like hygiene supplies and school supplies. And I think that those kinds of things are um, going to be the projects that I'm going to want to work on as president. And so, um, I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? Yeah, so we were just asking about why your experience inside and outside of the Associated Student Government qualifies you for the election. Yeah, and so outside of student government, um, there's a lot of things I've been doing. Like, for example, um, I've been working with kids at Book Cliff Middle School, and that has been a really good opportunity for me to be a positive role model for, um, for these kids who oftentimes are um, not in the best economic situation or maybe not have the best um, uh, experiences at home. And um, generally, I just think that um, I will be qualified to lead ASG in a new direction because I think a lot of what I've been seeing in ASG currently has been um, a lot of non-productiveness. And so I am always going to focus on the student and what I'm going to be able to um, do for like the individuals and for the whole. And um, that's what I want to do, so. Brilliant. I think. Leadership has been displayed to me through throwing me in the deep end, learning how to lead, as well as watching and learning from others. I think I've had a few cumulative experiences that really speak towards that. I've volunteered here in the Valley for years at middle schools, at elementary schools, working with kids, learning how to be that positive role model, like Jimmy said, learning how to be a leader for them as well. Um, rigorous academic studies and the like have taught that I think a leader has a few qualities that they need to display, that being compassionate, empathetic, listening, which what our campaign is running on. And also being having an open, accepting, and free mind that you can also employ critical thinking with, which I think are all lessons I've learned through the experiences I've had throughout my years in this valley. Yeah, and I'd just like to say briefly um, that I think that I bring something to the table that is I have a very analytical and logical mind, and I think that I'll be able to apply that to the presidency in a way that's really effective. So. Okay.
Thank you, Jimmy and Asa. So we'll move over to Sai and Jason. Um, why do you think your experience in ASG, the Cultural Inclusion Council, and Greek Life qualify you for the presidency and vice presidency? Yeah, so definitely, um, I'm the Culture Inclusion Council director. I oversee six different alliances, and I have to deal with these, uh, deal with different people from different backgrounds, and I have to essentially serve as that middleman. Uh, I have to use and apply the skills that I've learned through leadership through the Culture Inclusion Council and do it to the students of Colorado Mesa University. Uh, students are different, they have different values and different opinions, and I have to ensure that these def differences are represented. Yeah, absolutely. And then continuing with the same ideology Sai used, um, with being a, uh, the production manager at KMSA, being a member of the Theta's Opportunity, and recently joining the house in the, uh, ASG, I think that those are three different um, models of students we have at Mesa. And I feel like being that I've been able to find success as a student leader in all three of those organizations, I just think it's o overall made me a um, more well-rounded leader. Um, I've been better at understanding people and understanding their backgrounds, understanding where they come from, and understanding kind of what their thought process is. So I think that I'll be able to use that to use and apply those different ways that I've learned to lead um, to the great students of Colorado Mesa University. It just shows my various uh, ways of leadership. All right, thank you, Cy and Jason. Selena and Shelby. Why do you think your experience as ASG Vice President and CAB Director qualify you for the Presidency and Vice Presidency? Oh, well, I believe during my time as, as ASG Vice President and through my whole time for the past four years, I've been able to build really solid, great relationships with administration, faculty, and staff, and with the community at large. I also think that I've been really a point of contact for a diverse set of students, especially non-traditional military veterans, as a veteran myself. Um, even students that are younger than these freshmen, sophomores, and um, I've been able to pull from that experience and that feedback to lead an effort that address all, all issues um, that students face, whether they're older students, younger students. Um, and one key one that I've been passionate about is food insecurity, and it's something that I ran on in my previous campaign. And I've been able to do a great effort in addressing that issue on this campus and the community as well. And another issue that I ran on, or topic I ran on, was empowering students. And Maverick Marketplace has become a very popular event for students who have um, projects or side hustles that they do outside of the classroom to show that to the community. Um, and I also just have a genuine drive and concern um, for student uh, issues. And I want to continue to pursue those. I want to continue to address those. And there's a lot that we hope to do within this next coming year if we are elected. Um, going off of that, um, being in the position as CAB director has taught me how to lead a diverse group of students along with making connections to a huge diversity of students um, that are leading those clubs and being available to them to address any concerns or bring up any problems or help them and support them in terms of helping them fundraise and helping them plan events and just helping them with their own funds and keeping those in line. All right. Thank you, Selena and Shelby. So we'll keep it on you for this next two minute question. What have you accomplished during your time at CMU? Um, for me, as through my time here, I've, ac I've accomplished a lot that I'm very proud of. Um, this year, two big things were um, helping CMU to receive the hunger free and healthy minds designation from the Colorado Department of Higher Education. Um, I also played a part in getting swipe out hunger on campus and supporting the food pantry, which again, from what I've heard from students themselves, it has been really beneficial to them. Um, and I have allowed many to remain on campus and remain in their studies. I've also been a part of two biannuals. Um, I was part of the Senate that supported the development of a Montrose gym um, and a part of a Senate that helped with the Senate reflection. Amongst all my time with ASG, I've also been crucial in supporting uh, clubs, supporting students, supporting organizations, research conferences, and uh, various opportunities for, for students to um, pursue their education and experience different facets of um, college exp experience. Uh, something that I've accomplished is working with over 150 different clubs from different backgrounds and helping them grow and expand their own club and also expanding my organization. And this year we've added um, at least 15 other clubs to that fall under CAB and have also, for example, helped club fundraise minimum at least $2,000 to go on their own conference and get more networking and connections um, around the country. And something that makes me qualified is I have been a student athlete, I have been a student, and now I am currently an organization leader. So I can um, directly, un I, I understand the struggles that come 
with each position. And I have also been trained by our former CFO, Logan Taylor, on the biannual process and how that goes and everything that, f in that that entails. I think as a collective that we have a really strong, diverse background. Um, we have a lot of strong relationships and a really solid, genuine drive to represent students. All right, Selena, Shelby, thank you. Cy and Jason, you have two minutes for the same question. Yeah, so I'm not one to solely take uh, credit for my accomplishments, but we accomplished in the Culture Inclusion Council this year under my leadership. We had a sold out fashion show. We had a sold out luau, our first ever BSA formal, uh, our first ever uh, Native American marketplace. And also currently I'm helping my friend uh, start up the Asian Student Association that we have on campus. Yeah, absolutely, similar to Sai. Um, just being a part of these groups on campus, being in the fraternity, being at KMSA, we've been able to see a great rise in the number of students we've been able to engage in both the fraternity and the radio. Uh, this year at the radio station, we've seen a rise in the number of people we have attending our weekly meetings, giving them an opportunity to show um, their unique content on a, world, content on a worldwide stage. Uh, Jillian, yeah, I see you. Continuing on with that, um, the Theta Zai fraternity, we've seen a rise in our numbers since the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and we've been able to introduce a, a great group of young, young individuals to all the great things Colorado Mesa has to offer. We've been able to do that through leading and showing what all we can do and who we are and what, the, what this school has to offer. So I think more than anything, just through leadership and everything like that, I've been able to be a great leader, build some strong relationships on campus and really get my face and get my name out there. Awesome. Thank you, Cy and Jason. Thank you. Jimmy and Asa, two minutes for the same. Yeah, so um, since I've come to CMU, um, I've actually accomplished a lot. I think um, since I came here originally when I was a freshman, I've definitely grown a lot. And I've been able to do really well academically, and I've been um, in the Senate for the past school year. And I think with the Senate, I've been able to um, do a lot of things in terms of um, cutting out things that are unproductive and unhelpful for the students. And also I'm very proud of what I've been able to do with the um, Senate Equity Committee. And other than that, um, I'm just a person that likes to help people. And um, you can ask this like to my friends and to all of my peers, but what I really want to do with the position is I want to um, contact individual students, find out what their problems are, and address those. And I think that I have a unique set of skills that is able to do that because I, whenever I do something, I do it um, as well as I possibly can. And I have, um, like I said, kind of an analytical mind that lends itself toward um, understanding like the bylaws and the Constitution and understanding what students want and how to get there. Yeah, and that is actually something I want to draw attention to in terms of accomplishments that we've had just in the last two weeks. Creating a platform that we're campaigning on, listening to the students and wanting to get feedback from you. I mean, albeit a skeletal structure, we've already received voices. We've already received people giving us feedback. And I think that's a major accomplishment, accomplishment and in indicative of what our term were to look like. All right, thank you, Jimmy and Asa. So we're gonna keep it on you for this next two minute question. What are your goals for CMU and ASG should you be elected for the upcoming biennial process? Yeah, so um, for the biennial process, um, I think that there's a lot of factors that we consider. The first thing is that I always want to make sure that um, when I go into this process that I'm thinking about what the students and what the students would want out of the situation. Um, the other thing is I want to make sure that um, ASG has all of the funding that um, we need in order to get um, the projects and the things that we want to get done. Another thing is I want to um, work with the CFO and the executives and all of my team and come in to the biennial process with a plan and with a goal in mind. And also I want to seek to understand the biennial process so that we can go into it knowing exactly what to expect and we can get exactly what we want out of it. Yeah, exactly. I think it's just a means of looking at what we have going for us and understanding what we want more to come out of it and working towards that collaboratively. All right. Thank you, Jimmy and Asa. Selena and Shelby, you now have two minutes for the same question. Uh, so the biennial process is an opportunity for um, orgs to request funding from student fees that will last in the next two years. And I think for us, a key thing we want to do is make sure that we're holding orgs accountable in regards to, one, are the fees that they're being allocated 
really the amount that they need? Do they need more? Do they need less? And with that funding, are they going to address um, the needs of the students? That is a key process. And through that, we want to also make sure that the Senate and the House, especially with the House potentially going to become an entirely elected, elected new body, that everybody understands the roles and responsibilities of their position and that they take that seriously because I think student fees are really important and we all pay them and we want to make sure that they're being allocated accordingly. Shelby, is there mm -hmm. anything you'd like to add? Just jumping off of that, we want to be purposeful <coughs> with our communication to the clubs, the orgs, and the students uh, on a more personal level and just be open and let them know what's going on and what their fees are being used for. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Selena and Shelby. Now, Sai and Jason. We're going to move to you for the same two-minute question. Cool. So uh, the past two biannuals ran by President Flores as well as President Bautista, both of them made sure that student fees remained low. And because of these cuts, the orgs are overdue on these fundings. And also, as well as COVID taken into account, uh, we think it's time to give these orgs their money back. And another thing to add is utilizing the presidential ca cabinet because it's one of the most powerful rooms in the office because you know you have orgs that are in the in the room as well as other sports teams in the room as well absolutely yeah and kind of to how we'll achieve that is we want to make sure we're laying a strong foundation especially as vp um, i want to make sure that beforehand um, i want to ensure that rooms and meeting times are already set beforehand so we know when what where and how we're going to accomplish everything we need to for the biannual process. To continue on with that, I want to say that I will personally meet with the Speaker of the House, the Senate leader, and my CFO to ensure that all the people that have a great say in what's going on with the biannual process know what's going on and there's transparent and honest communication about the status of the biannual. Uh, in addition to that, I want to ensure that we have a pro staff member in that meeting. Just, just to make sure, like I said before, we have all the leaders of the biennial process in the same room, on the same page, so they can relay information to their different sectors of Colorado Mason University. Um, and like I said, I just want to maintain that transparent and honest communication because the biennial was such a strong and important process of ASG. All right. Thank you, Sian Jason. Thank you. So we'll stay on you for this next question. What is your plan for working with the Senate and the House Appropriations Committee should you be elected? Yeah, definitely. And uh, Selena brought it up as well. You know, being the House, maybe it's separate entity. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that it is solidified. Uh, we want to meet with the Senate leader as well as the House Speaker on a weekly basis and create that honesty and transparency. Absolutely. And, and the big thing to note uh, when considering the House and the Senate Appropriations Committee is it's not just me and Cy. Uh, we want to make sure that our team and everybody who's put in positions of leadership in ASG are strong members, that they're open and honest, they communicate well, and they listen to the people of these committees. Because that way, it will relieve stress and ensure that everything is smooth in, the, in ASG. It will unite ASG. We feel like something, this is something that's been lacking in the past, especially with this past semester, with people kind of coming and going here and there. So we feel like as long as we're communicating, we're relieving stress, and we're doing the things to unite you ASG, it will be a strong house in Senate Appropriations Committee. Awesome. Thank you both. Okay. Jimmy and Asa, same question. Yeah. So um, I think that this is a very good question and there's several things I want to do. The first thing is that I think that the House members and the Senate members need to come into um, the Senate knowing exactly what they need to do and what their responsibilities are. And so I also want to be a leader for these people so that the entire body has a sense of direction and so that each person is not just working on their individual projects that we can all work cooperatively and um, also that I think we need to do some more task allocation and specialization so especially with like particular senators we could talk to them about assigning particular tasks and then they could do those tasks during their um, their office hours and I think that if we provide um, more direction for individual senators, then that's going to be really fruitful. Um, when I first arrived into the Senate, I didn't really know uh, how ASG worked. I didn't really know all the rules. I didn't know a lot of things. And so I think um, providing that transparency and direction and um, making sure that everyone is very familiar with, first of all, how ASG works on the whole, and second of all, what their individual um, responsibilities and tasks should be is very important. Yeah, absolutely. And we've talked a lot about making sure that we're working individually with the Senate members too, making sure that they feel like they have the res resources in us for answers they have questions to and just really the likes, making sure that we're resources for them to use. Okay, thank you very much.
Celine and Shelby, you both have two minutes to answer the same question. Awesome. So I think the key thing right off the bat for us is to establish a mission and a standard for, for the entire body. I think sometimes we get lost in the position once we get into it and we forget the reason why any of us ran to be in that position. So I, I, from the get-go, I want us to all be on the same page that at the core of what we're doing, we're really representing students and we're following through on why we even decided to be in the positions. Based on that, we're, we're, we're also making sure that we understand the procedures, we understand Robert's rules, we're understanding etiquette and behavior, and that we're making sure that we're using that to the best of our ability to represent students. Another thing on top of that is maintaining an open door policy, a policy and being available to answer any questions and remaining that resource. I've been a part of ASG for a long time, and fortunately, I know a lot, I've been through a lot, and I know a lot in regards to procedure, documentation, how to get things done, how to push initiatives, how to push projects, and who to talk to. So I want to be that resource for the House and for the Senate. And above all, too, I want to keep us accountable. I think it's important that <coughs> when we talk about issues and we talk about concerns, that they just don't stay in our meetings, that we actually go out and we talk to students, and that we go out and we see what can we actually do today that can be done, whether that be um, maintaining weekly or biweekly meetings, and we're just keeping ourselves um, aware of where we are and the progress that we're making. Shelby, mm -hmm. is there anything like that? Um, just basically what Selena said and making sure that everyone knows what's going on and understands the documents and the rules that are needed for the process and everything that they're doing. Um, and just making sure that everyone has a clear, clear understanding about what they need to accomplish in a certain amount of time, whether it's a couple weeks, a few days, or just the year as a whole. All right. Thank you both. So we're going to stay on you for our last question. Why should CMU students vote for you as president and vice president? So you want to start? Um, yeah. So we really just want to be the the people that bridge the gap between our three campuses. Um, we feel as mantras and WCCC get pushed behind and um, are more underrepresented than our main campus, we just kind of want to bring everyone together. Um, we want to listen, actually listen to issues that students have on campus in regards to safety, in regards to food insecurities, housing insecurities, lack of hygiene or school supplies, and work towards that and just expand um, initiatives that Selena has already started. We also just have a genuine care about students. Um, both of us are very diverse. We're very different in age and just background. And I think that has, uh, has allowed us to be in a position to consider all sorts of different view viewpoints, perspectives, and to really hear different issues and recognize different issues. And at the core of it, we think that we will be in the best position to address all issues, whether you're a WCCC student, a Montreux student, a May Campus student, whether you're a veteran, a mom, a dad, uh, you know, you're just entering uh, college right out of high school. Um, at the core of it, we're really just motivated to representing all students and all different issues and causes. Mm -hmm. all Thank right. you. Thank you both very much. So we'll move on to Jimmy and Asa for the same question. Okay. Yeah. So um, the reason why you should vote for us is because we're we're here for you, and we have very specific plans for what we want to do when we get into office. And in fact, every single student response that has said something that they would like to be changed on campus, I have taken note of that and. I um, will work on those things. So some of those things might include, um, for example, I want to create tell me boxes where I could put up like a little note box where people could write me individual notes and then I'm making a promise to read every single one of them. Um, the second thing is that um, we want to um, decrease theft on campus because I know a lot of people um, have their bikes stolen and things like that. Another thing is we want to replace the, um, the felt on the pool tables and the point. We want to um, help with safety on 12th Avenue for people riding their bikes. We want to do all kinds of things. And so when we get into office, all of these things that we promised and that we've talked about, we're going to get right to work on. And that's, that's why we're here is because we want to work for you. Yeah, absolutely. And on that, I, we are both excellent listeners, I think, in terms of lending a sympathetic ear, as we've seen with our responses, but also taking criticism. We understand that criticism in good heart means you know, we can grow as individuals and be better for you as leaders. And that's ultimately our goal, is to strive for the best that we can be for you guys. Okay, thank you both. And now, of course, we're gonna move to Cy and Jason for the same question. Thank you. 
Yeah, you should definitely vote for us because we are approachable and we're pretty familiar on campus as well. You know, we will provide you with those resources, whether it's reaching out to President Marshall or VP Jody Deers. You know, we want to give you guys those resources to get a future job in the future. Uh, we also want to be available to students. We want to be mentors to uh, those students that we have on campus and making sure that we're honest and transparent with, uh, with all the student fees and where they're allocated. Yeah, absolutely. And like Sai just said, when we decided to run, we told students they can ensure four things from our presidency. Um, and that's transparency and honesty, availability, consulting, and to encourage students. Um, we feel like through these four things, these four pillars of our presidency, we'll be able to, be able to restore some of that maverick pride we've lost in the, lost in the past. Um, when I was a freshman on campus, I feel like people really enjoyed being here. They really enjoyed being a Maverick. They really enjoyed being at the Champagne of D2. And I feel like through our presidency, we'll be able to bring some of that back. It's important for students to know that through ASG, your ideas, your questions, your concerns, everything could be met and handled. And being that me and Sai are two known faces on campus, we want students to know that you can come to us with all of that, whether it's something big, something small, no matter what it is. If we can't help you, we can put you on the right track to get help. So with that being said, thank you all for your time. Thank you, everybody, for showing up, and we really appreciate it. Go right. Mavs. Thank you, Sai and Jason. You have two minutes for your closing remarks. That was my closing. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> then we can move on. <laughs> Selena and Shelby, two minutes for any closing remarks. Yeah, um, I want to start off with saying we really appreciate um, this all coming together and all of us being here. Um, just kind of going off of that, we are really genuine and we just really want to work with students. I personally just want to expand um, and help more people than I already have. Um, whether you're part of a club, whether you're an incoming freshman, you're a non-traditional who took some years off between high school and college, whether you're an out-of-state student like I was, struggling, moving across the country, not knowing anyone. Um, and yeah. yeah, we really just want to represent all students and make sure that all ideas, any concerns, that they're, they're brought up and they're, they're addressed and that we're talking to the right people and that collectively we are pushing ourselves forward as a student body, not just within ASG and other orgs, but as a collective body on all three campuses. All right. Thank you, Selena and Shelby. Would you like to start? I'd love to. Yeah, well, we're, like our motto is here for you, we're running compassion first and empathetic listening, responsive actionable claims and that's really what we have at the heart of our campaign is that decisive action in your favor yeah and I would just like to say that um, we are um, really trying to do something special which is that like a lot of students don't even know what ASG is and so I would like to change that if I get into president I want to make sure that Every student feels like they could be involved in the process if they wanted to. And every student feels like they are represented. And that's why one of our pillars of our campaign has been accessibility. And anything that you guys say to us, like via email or later on if, if we end up winning by the tell, tell me boxes, then we are going to take those suggestions and we are going to try to implement them as best as we can. Our main goal here is that we are trying to um, do actionable projects that uh, will help individual students rather than just allocating money for clubs and orgs and having countless meetings and not doing anything. All right, thank you both. So this concludes tonight's debate. A big thanks for watching and a big, big thanks to CMU TV back there behind the cameras. Voting is open now and it will end on Friday, April 15th. So be sure to vote and have a good night. <laughs>